you very much for coming. My name is Lawrence Yu. I'm the general manager for Lenovo Retail Solutions Worldwide. And I'm very honored to be here today with two of my best friends and two of my honored <laughs> guests, Kim and Tim. So Thank I'm going to let themselves do a quick intro of themselves. So Hi there. Kim, I'm please. Sure. Thanks, Lawrence. I'm Kim Kenny. I'm the CEO of Kiosk Information Systems. We're based out of Colorado, and we partner with Lenovo and our good friends at Doddle. And I'll pass to Tim to do his introduction. Thanks very much. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks again for the invitation to come all the way here from London, where Doddle's based. Uh, we, uh, Doddle specializes in providing kind of technology solutions to make the first and final mile of kind of e-com fulfillment and delivery uh, as kind of sustainable, uh, scalable and profitable as we possibly can. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a bit more about how our organizations work together yeah. in, a, in a minute. Right. Awesome. Stuff. So let me start the afternoon session with a quick exercise. So how many of you shop with Amazon? Raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> for those of you who never shopped at Amazon, I don't know what's wrong, but second, how many of you bought from Amazon and returned stuff to Amazon? Okay, and how many of you is happy with that return experience? All right, a few hands. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about return. That is retail, and that's a last mile, probably the less glamorous mile of retail. But this is uh, the point we're gonna talk about today how three companies working together to give the best experience at the last mile of a customer shopping experience. So, so before I go in, before I go on, I'm gonna ask Tim a question. So Tim came all the way from London. So can you tell us something about how big is this problem? Come on, just the returns, right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, returns is one of the, you know, e-commerce, shopping returns, you know, item returns is one of those real kind of, I guess kind of contradictions in retail because on one hand you know retailers need to give consumers you know really convenient low cost easy ways to be able to shop but also return things they don't want yeah. you know online shopping doesn't work unless you have the ability to try items you know and a kind of easy hassle free way of returning them but of course it it creates a big problem the you know kind of industry analysts are now suggesting that by the end of this decade uh, about $16 trillion worth of returns are going to be floating around the e-commerce ecosystem at any particular point. And just this year in the US, I think the latest figures were $70 billion wow. cost to the industry because of this growing pain point of e-commerce returns. You know, where does that cost come from? Well, it comes from items that have been returned, but they're returned in a condition or in a time frame that means they can't be resold at full price. It comes from returns that, that, that travel via the, the highest cost single unit rate. Very expensive to get those items back. One of my favorite stats to highlight the scale of the problem is a very large online fashion retailer based in the UK, global business, but based in the UK this year, in their annual results, made the statement that just 6% of their customers were, cost, were, were creating a 100 million pound hit to their bottom line. And it's because of those customers' propensity to return at high levels, you know, a high degree, and also the choices they made when they were going to be returning yeah. items. And so, you know, this is, a, this is a very serious problem that is creating a significant profitability and scalability problem in e-commerce overall. But I think the, the final thing I'd say in terms of the scale of the challenge is that, that, that you know, reputationally, both from an ESG perspective, but also in terms of customer experience, you know, the way you go about delivering a great returns experience for a customer doesn't get away from the fact that, you know, e-commerce returns are inherently uh, inefficient, you know, and they have an impact on society and on our planet. And so reputationally, this is becoming as much a bigger problem as it is a, uh, a profitability problem. Okay, Tim, so thank you. There's a lot of problem. Yeah, so basically, problem. it's a huge problem globally, not just here, but everywhere. In yeah. Europe as well, right? Yeah, very much so, yeah. So, and today, we're not here just to share problems. We're here to share a solution. Right? So, Tim, <laughs> how is our technology going to improve the situation and make our customer experience better? Yeah, so, I mean, at this particular event, bearing in mind, you know, I've sat with you all this morning, talk, you know, looking at how... Uh, you know, AI is, you know, kind of, kind of, is working around cognitive brain function and, you know, the cutting edge of technology. The reality about e-commerce returns is it's a space in retail that is still almost at position zero. 
you know, still, I think particularly here in the US, still a very high proportion of retailers at the point at which you want to return an item will either make you ring a contact center and tell them that you've got a return and they might send you a shipping label or they'll ask you to fill out a form that came in the outbound package and you've got to put that form back into a, back into a returns package and send it back to the customer. So in many cases, we're just at like position one. We're digitizing the kind of the consumer experience, but also the collection of critical data in order to be able to, uh, you know, to take, action, take action on the back of that, uh, on the back of that return. But it is starting to move, it's starting to change. So, so, you know, by giving the consumer a much more kind of intuitive digital journey that allows them to initiate a return, you know, to understand what choices they've got about how they can get that return back into a network, you know, and also to, to give them insight into where that return is, where they're getting their refund, you know, when they're getting their refund. Uh, it allows you to gather all the right information about the consumer, the item itself, and why that item is being returned. So all of a sudden, you know, now the industry is in a place where it's, it's been able to share information through different supply chain systems. And again, this is all very new. By digitizing, you know, workflows in warehouses on the back of information that you and I, all of us, have provided. I'm sending this item back because it didn't fit, but it's in perfect condition. I actually know now, at the moment I scan that into a warehouse, I don't have to go through some pick, pack, look process. I know I've just got to reprocess the item, put it back into stock. Right. So starting to create that sort of digital flow. But you can imagine the power when we start to be able to consolidate all that data and start to be able to use AI to be able to spot patterns. Because there are patterns in this at our level, you know, at a consumer level. You know, we have patterns, we have trends, we have preferences. Can we spot those preferences? Uh, where well, there are patterns about particular SKU types. You know, every, every retailer will tell you uh, that there are certain items that always have a high degree of, high degree of right. returns. Shoes, for example, you know, it's hard to buy a pair of shoes without trying them on. So often you'll buy two different sizes, you'll buy two different widths, you'll get them back into the system. Using AI to be able to predict that that item is going to come back into stock. Because if you can't predict that items are going to come back in a, in a, in a segment like apparel, like fashion, where anything up to 40% of your stock is at any time on somebody's bedroom floor <laughs> or on the front seat of their car waiting to be dropped back into a FedEx shop or into a, or into a uh, USPS location, then you're over-ordering, you're carrying more inventory because these items are going to fundamentally find their way back into stock. So we're starting to see AI playing out in that particular space and we, yeah. we've got a product launch later this year that's going to start to put that to work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Great. team. And by the way, I'm going to do a small commercial slash announcement for Tim. So how many of you have heard of a Dotto before? Please raise your hand. A few. How many of you <laughs> heard of Blue us. Yonder before? All right, much more. So just about a week ago, Tim's company was just bought by Blue Yonder. So now they're one company, much bigger now. So congratulations yeah. to you, Tim. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and our theme today is AI for all. And one thing from this morning session, yeah. my old boss, YY, said, hey, look, AI is great, and devices is the access point to AI. So I'm gonna turn my question to Kim. Sure. So how is your device, how is your solution helping people solve the return problem together yeah. with Tim's software technology? Yes. So for 30 years, we've been manufacturing kiosks. And you know, within a kiosk, you have all different components that can capture data. So now we have a way to create a really good user experience around a problem, like returning a, an item that you purchased on Amazon, for example. And instead of you know, an experience like this one in the photo, maybe have more of a self-service option where you would walk up to a kiosk and you would process your return just while you're there in a store doing your shopping. So that's, that's one of the examples. And I don't know how many of you have lately been to a Whole Foods grocery store. It's a higher end US grocery chain. And uh, we've deployed recently with Dottle to all of the Whole Foods locations. In Austin here, actually there are six stores. Yep, this right. is Whole Foods headquarters is here in Austin. Right. So there are six stores. So we have six of the kiosk and Dottle returns kiosks there for automated returns. And what it does create is a, is a good user experience where you do have a way 
to capture data from the user that they, you know, they, and just in the process of making the return, they're telling you, did you like this experience? You know, what is the reason for the return? You're capturing that in a really easy, fluid way. And then like Tim was talking about, one return at a time creates a lot of logistics. With the kiosk, now you have maybe in one day, a hundred people returning an item to that kiosk, which sort of consolidates all of the logistics for a retailer or e-commerce like Amazon to have all of that consolidated. Why don't you show us yeah, a few photos? One no, of the one more. What it oh, looks yeah, like yeah. It's about oh, this. Sorry, sorry yeah. no, the, 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 the previous yeah. picture. Okay. I don't worry about it. Sorry, oh, I've got to go all the way around. One of the relevant points about the previous picture is that you know, we've already talked about how you know getting at the core problem of returns, understanding why consumers are ordering you know more items they need or returning items that don't fit, they don't want, are not appropriate, is gathering the data. And if the only way you can interact with a consumer in the returns journey is by asking them to queue in a busy store at a busy time of day, when you get to the front, when you get to the queue, and you start to ask the consumer questions, bearing in mind they've been standing in the queue, you're not going to get the answers. So right. what our returns kiosk do is it's a very intuitive but very fast process where much of the information has been provided in advance online and we're just, we're, we're kind of confirming that data when the consumer yep. goes through the journey. So we've got a much better chance of gathering all the information, the insight we need to be able to run AI models and to be able to, you know, really get at the heart of the problem. Good one. Exactly. So today, our, our topic is about retail solution. It's not about return solution. But return right. is definitely a piece, sometimes overlooked piece of the whole retail solution. Right? So, but I do want to ask Kim and Tim, for both sure. of you, so what does Lenovo have to do in all of this? Well, I'll let, uh, you came the furthest, I'll let you go first. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we, so like lots of, you know, we've been a relatively small business um, you know, trying to pioneer in a space on a, on a sort of global footprint. And we've managed to get ourselves over the last 10 years to the place where, you know, we power returns journeys for 900 retailers in Australia, uh, se several hundred in Europe, uh, th about a thousand in Japan. So we have, we have good spread. We work with the likes of Coles, Amazon here in the US. But, you know, this is a, the, the challenge with all of this is you need, you need absolute scale. So to be able to really tackle returns, the heart of the returns problem, any retailer needs to be able to get at every, what, every consumer because you need to be able to get that uniform customer experience to be able to kind of treat consumers individually. Uh, and that requires scale. You know, it requires scale, it requires relevance, uh, and it just requires the experience of being able to deploy en masse. Uh, and of course, that was a challenge for us. You know, when we came over here to the US, uh, you know, we had this opportunity to take our relationship with Amazon that one step further forward, right. you know, by bringing a self-service solution to market. Thankfully, you know, we met the guys at Kiosk who are, be able, who are able to manufacture at scale. But again, taking that product internationally, you need a partner that understands devices, device management, that has the kind of the field resources to be able to deploy en masse across every geography. But importantly, Lenovo cracked one big part of the problem for us, which is there aren't many retailers out there globally that have a capital pool, a bunch of cash sitting around that allows them to buy 10,000 kiosks for their, their delivery network uh, at $7,000 each. What that requires is what we now call device as a service, which is something we dreamed about probably you know, six months ago is now something which is very much a reality because we have a global device as a service uh, partnership with Lenovo and Kiosk, which allows us to deploy this product any retail, any country, anywhere else. Yeah, I would agree with Thank your you, comments. Tim. And then just to add on, there was actually some information about device as a service. Tim mentioned it as well. But that is a really important part of, let's call it the service wrapper for our solution that Lenovo is bringing to the table to make it really easy for a global customer like a major hotel, for example. They have very decentralized decision making. So to be able to buy something through Lenovo that is a SKU, that has local support and service available with an operating expense model like Tim mentioned, where the retailer may want to use their operating expense, not tie up their capital expense. So, you know, I've had the privilege really to be with Lawrence and some of his team mem members in front of some big global customers. And, you know, we manufacture in, in the U.S. and Colorado. We've been in business there for 30 years. 
We're owned by a company out of Taiwan called Posiflex, so we also have the ability to manufacture there. And now, you know, our combined solution, we're taking to market right now in Asia and some interesting locations. Um, we actually have the returns kiosk operating in all regions right now, so um, it's really exciting. Australia, the UK, the US, with Whole Foods is a great Singapore, example. Yeah. Singapore, right. So, uh, yeah, so it's very exciting, but the, the global strength that Lenovo brings to the table is really important for customers. It really saw, ticks the box, and for us, it sets us apart from anybody else that's trying to put a solution together because it's the full solution with a nice service wrapper. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Tim and Kim. Yeah. So for Lenovo, we, don't, we can't do everything all about, by ourselves. Yeah. We have a software partner like Dotto. We have a hardware partner like Kiosk. And Lenovo provide a global scale as well as, well as a device and service, professional service as well as managed service worldwide, globally. So three companies, very complementary to each other in their own strength, in their own areas. So when we combine together, we have this software plus hardware plus services solution at a global scale. So this is really powerful to many of our global customers. Even for the regional players who is nationwide, this provides them a pretty unbeatable value proposition. And we want to do this everywhere with Dotto, with Kiosk, and Lenovo actually have more than uh, return services, of course. Right. And part of it is at our retail solutions shop. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't already, go check it out. We have multiple kinds of hardware, that's Lenovo's bread and butter, and with multiple kinds of software and services from ourselves and as well as from our ecosystem partners. And I want to today thank Tim and Kim very much for sharing the You're stage welcome. with us and appreciate all of your time as yes, well. Thanks so thank everyone. you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.